السلام علیکم ایوریون آئی تھنک وی گڈ اسٹارٹ ناؤ سو بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی نیم از کرن اجاز اینڈ آئی ول بی ماڈریٹنگ ٹوڈے سیشن آن بہاف آف دا اکیڈمک کاؤنسل آف امامیا میڈکس انٹرنیشنل آئی وڈ لائک ٹو ویلکم آل آف یو ٹو دس ہیلتھ ایجوکیشن سیشن وی آر پلیز ٹو ہیو دس آن دا ففٹینتھ آف شبان اینڈ the we want to convey our warm wishes for this uh, the birthday of imam e zamana akhir zamale salam so uh, congratulations to everyone over here so ramadan is around the corner and uh, everyone is excited to go on this spiritual journey and um, we have to be very uh, careful we have certain questions in ramadan that uh, we want to balance our health and the, and ramadan and the requirements of ramadan as well especially when people are uh, having some diseases like uh, diabetes and uh, so we are honored today to have speakers who are sharing key information about diabetes and its effects on the human body then um one of our speakers will also be um, talking about how we can adjust our diet followed by uh, how uh, we can take our medications properly during these Ram uh, ramadan uh, times so first um, we'll uh, have our presentations and then i would request everyone to make a note of all the questions that you have and in the later half like after all the presentations are completed we'll request you to unmute yourself and um, uh, you can ask all your questions with our expert to our with our, from our experts um, meanwhile please i don't want anything i said i didn't like the way you threw my 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 you know my namaz ke chadar the way you threw it all over yeah. so i would request people to mute themselves um, if uh when they are joining us um well, like when you are listening to the lecture um so with that i think i will introduce our first uh, our first speaker dr nasir asgar um from prestigious a uh, prestige medical group in roswell um georgia and he's also practicing in canton georgia so welcome dr asgar um you can mute your unmute your sound can you guys hear me yes assalamu alaikum um so we are talking about diabetes in ramzan uh so we'll start with what is diabetes you know diabetes um it is the amount of glucose in your blood when it gets too high so if you have too much sugar in your blood that's diabetes basically anything above 126 fasting um your pancreas doesn't make enough insulin or doesn't get enough insulin or your body's uh, receptors are not sensitive to that insulin and that's what makes your sugar go high insulin is the hormone that's produced by the pancreas and allows sugar to get into the cells glucose you know glucose is from eating carbohydrates such as rice bread um it's also produced by the liver where you store your glucose um so soda fruits these are all forms of glucose Um in diabetes you cannot manage the sugar properly so it builds up in your blood so you don't feel it necessarily but your sugar is high just like if you drop soda on a table the table gets sticky your blood is sticky so you don't feel it but it's there it's causing a lot of damage Um there are two types of diabetes in the in um medicine it's when the pancreas one of them is type 1 diabetics or when the pancreas cannot make any insulin so you are dependent on that insulin so you have to take injections it's not associated with overweight usually in a younger individual somebody who's 11 or 12 can get type 1 diabetes even when somebody becomes an adult they can become type 1 diabetic maybe through a virus um or genetic causes um and about 10% of the patients are type 1 diabetics type 2 diabetes uh, happens when you know your body cannot make enough insulin or your insulin is not sends the in, your body is not sending it to to that insulin um there are different factors that can affect that your age your weight 
um, where you're from, um, you know, what your lifestyle is can affect type 2 diabetes. And, it, and usually this happens, people don't show up with type 2 diabetes early. They show up late because they don't know. They don't, again, you don't feel it, but the sugar is getting higher and higher. So you have to check your, you know, every two years, every one year, go to your doctor, get your fasting sugars checked. Um, otherwise, you don't know until it's too late. By the time you feel something is wrong, it's too late. Your sugars have already caused a lot of damage. So you want to get a baseline sugar checked. Um, and it's very life-threatening. You know, if your sugars are 300, 400, you can go to coma, your, your sodium will get low, um, you will start losing a lot of weight, um, heart attacks, strokes, different things. About 90% of diabetics are type 2 diabetics. And so what happens in Ramzan when you fast? Uh, about eight hours after your last meal, the body starts using energy stores to keep your body sugar to normal. Um, in diabetes, if you take tablets, you know, tablets or injections or insulin, your risk of going sugar is getting low is much higher, obviously. Um, and risk of high glucose following, you know, larger meals is very high too. You, you haven't eaten anything all day long and you eat um, in the evenings, you know, large meals and you spike your sugar. So you can do these highs or these lows, hypoglycemia, high, high sugars, you know, dehydration is very dangerous for people with diabetes. Um, so the question is, you know, in Ramadan, can you fast with diabetes? Um, you don't have to. You're exempt. You are exempt from fasting with, in diabetes in Ramadan. But you can. You can still do it, especially if it's a mild case of diabetes and you're only on medications. Some people can do it. Um, but, you know, you have to be checking your sugars. Um, I think that's the most important thing. If you check your sugars, you kind of have an idea of what's going on, and it doesn't break your fast. So if, you, if you're diabetic and you decide to do Ramadan, check your sugars. There are these new monitors, you know, the Freestyle Libres you put on your arm and it can check your sugar every minute. So you don't even have to prick your finger anymore. So I think that's the most important thing in diabetes for management and in Ramadan is to check your sugars. And again, if you check your sugars, you do not break your fast. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Asbert. This is really nice. Um, so moving on to the next uh, section of our uh, session over here. I'll request our next speaker, who's a rare gem, and she's on call, but she is still, uh, we are really grateful that she was able to join uh, and give us the, these uh, few uh, words of wisdom. Sister Busha Jaffrey is a registered dietitian associated with Emory Healthcare, and she will guide us about uh, how we can eat healthy in Ramadan. Welcome, sister. Thank you so much. Asalaamu Alaikum, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, there will be uh, some repetition going across from all of us, I think, um, but it's just to kind of, you know, kind of make it very clear that diabetes and fasting rules and how to do it safely. Um, so this is my first slide that I put up. So I would say that um, exactly what Brother Nasir just said as well. Um, before fasting, make sure you consult your healthcare physician because we want to make sure that there's any medications or anything like that that needs to be adjusted. They're able to kind of guide you that on a safer way to do. Um, if you take insulin or medications that increase, like have you have a hypo, which is basically where your sugar goes low, just be aware of the sign and symptoms. I do go a little bit into that a little later on. Um, and again, what the um, previous presenter said as well about testing sugars whilst you're fasting as well. Okay, so just getting into the next slide of how we can focus on diet and diabetes. So I've tried to keep it very general and try and keep it very brief. So it's the key points are taken away from this. Can we please have the next slide? Thank you so much. Okay, so initially the general tips, first of all. So first, the main thing I want to say is do not skip any of your suhoor times or your iftar times when you're diabetic. We want you to be able to get energy and keep the sugar in the blood, you know, at an adequate level without you feeling and experiencing or feeling unwell during fasting. Um, the other thing I would like to, you all to focus on is portion control. So we, our diet is delicious. We all have very amazing foods that we all want to eat. Um, it's just about making sure that we're not overdoing it. Um, so definitely looking at portion control during Ramzan as well, and generally healthy eating afterwards too. 
Um, make sure you have a varied diet. So every food group, you know, in moderation and variation to kind of give you all of the vitamins and minerals that you kind of need and take away again. Um, another thing to focus on is eating low GI foods. And when I say GI, I mean low glycemic index foods. And I will go into a little bit of, I'll go into more detail a little bit later on. Um, having fried foods and oily foods in moderation, we all love our samosa and pokore, but we all have to just make sure that we are not overdoing it again and just kind of making sure that we are having a healthier lifestyle. Um, limiting fatty foods like parate or puris, or if you have chevra or any like type of Bombay mix, then for sure limiting those snacks for sure. Um, salt is a big takeaway just for general healthy eating hot. And also it's going to make you very thirsty during your fast. So making sure that that is not being overdone, just adding a little in your cooking, but nothing after that. And, and of course, avoiding sweet foods, because we do want to make sure that your sugar levels are staying well controlled. Okay, so another key factor of during Ramzan, which I, we all struggle with, is hydration. Um, I want to say water is the best option first, of course, to drink. Um, you know, there's no calories, there's no empty calories in there. There's not going to affect your sugars, but you are going to be staying hydrated, which of course is going to help generally with everything that's going on during a fast. Avoid any sugary, fizzy drinks. Um, and, enjoy, and also trying to avoid any fruit juices as both of those things, they just raise your sugar levels to a very high amount, which is kind of, you know, what we want to kind of avoid. Um, and again, the sweetness, if you're feeding, if you're having those sweet drinks, you're going to feel a lot thirsty too. Um, so we, you know, we don't want you to, to have a rosa and then having, you know, having some issues with that as well. Um, avoid adding sugar to any hot drinks that you might have. Um, so we all have a, you know, sometimes everyone wants to have a, a nice cup of chai after iftar or, you know, obviously in seri as well. But it's just making sure you're not adding any sugar into that. Um, any milk drinks such as lassi or laban, they're a very good source of protein and calcium. Um, the unsweetened version is obviously a little bit better. Um, so and the healthier options too. So that's OK to incorporate as long as you're getting hydration there. Okay, so I wanted to kind of give a little bit of an idea of what to kind of generally eat during these times. Um, first off, when you're having your seri or suhoor, like we like to say, um, we want to kind of aim for having like a high fiber starchy diet, um, a meal, sorry, in the morning. And that usually consists of like an oatmeal or cereal, um, having any brown rice or having um higher fiber content breakfast that breaks down slower and that will allow your sugar levels to kind of you know when that meal is broken down the sugar release will be a lot more streamlined and slower into the bloodstream so controlling that um you're fine to have lentils chickpeas and beans are also a really good source of protein as well so it's focusing on having a well varied breakfast in the morning so you've got your high fiber having some protein in there as well if you want to have eggs too please do go ahead and have the eggs um, you can also add things in. So if you do have like an oatmeal, you can go ahead and add in some fruit into that. Um, and, you know, that will just kind of boost it up. You'll get some vitamins in the morning. It's it's a good nutritious breakfast to have in that morning. Um, and also we do want to make sure a lot of the issues sometimes happen in Ramzan is obviously constipation. So making sure your hydration, making sure you've got the fiber in the diet so that that it isn't a huge concern when you're obviously doing the 30 days. Okay, so here are some of, I wanted to make it a little bit less words and more pictures. <laughs> so I put up some um, pictures of low glycemic index foods. And these generally mean the type of foods that break down slower, they have a well controlled release of sugar into the bloodstream. And these overall are well good for your diabetes. Um, so even when you're, you know, these are foods to focus on generally, not only just out of Ramzan, but generally when you're following a diabetic diet. Um, so as you can see, we've got eggs up on there as well. So great way to kind of incorporate that into your seri and have eggs with some toast. Carbohydrates are perfectly fine. They have a bad rep, but we all kind of, it's just about choosing the right type of carbohydrate. It's the high fiber ones that you want. So any bread with seeds or grains in it that break down slower, those are the ones to go for. Um, fish, of course, we have get a lot of healthy fats from there. You get a good source of protein. So again, focusing on fish in your diet. 
Um, fruit and vegetables in general, for sure, are always low glycemic index foods. So again, it's just about incorporating those and making sure you're having those in each of your meals. Having um, nuts, cashews, almonds, these are really good. It doesn't have to be a big quantity. It could just be, uh, you know, a f just a few handful is just fine or like three or four, it's fine. But again, incorporating that into the day for sure. Um, having oatmeal, having, um, you know, kind of a high fiber, like I said before in those well, that is very low glycemic index food. So definitely going for things like that. Noodles, um, rice, you know, these things are the staple for rice, definitely. And obviously roti and stuff like naan, bread. These are all the staples of our diet. So it's okay to have that, but it's just about choosing the options, which ones. So the high seeded breads, the rice, having basmati rice is perfectly fine. That one is good for us. Um, it has a good amount of sugar to kind of, again, release. Okay, next slide. Thank you. Okay, so iftar, um, I wanted to highlight the amount of sugar in dates. We all love dates and they're very, very healthy um, for us. And of course, we, you know, we love opening our fast with some dates. But I did want to just kind of point out that two dates does contain about 30 grams of carbohydrate in it. Um, 30 grams without stones can provide about 20 grams of carbohydrate. I'm sorry. Um, so which is almost the equivalent to a slice of medium, uh, a, a slice of bread, a uh, medium sized bread. So maybe trying to adjust that and maybe having one date and then, you know, and then going ahead and opening it with some warm water, um, is probably a better way to kind of make, be able to do that. Um, so that you can able to eat a meal that has more carbohydrate in it and you've not just taken away some of your carbohydrate allowance with the dates. Um, ensure you're including lots of fruit, vegetables, dal, and yogurts in your meals. Yogurts is great if you've got issues with acidity and things like that. It's going to make your stomach lining a lot more cooler and calmer. So having things like that for sure is, is always a good idea. And again, choosing lower GI foods again for your iftari too. So doing a rice again, but just portion control. So you want to kind of aim for the side of your palm of your hand. So that is your portion of your rice. And then adding in any salad with some protein in there, be it beef, chicken, or if you wanted to do vegetable, um, like sabzi, that's fine to do as well. Okay, so a little bit into treatments for hypo. So when I'm saying hypo, I mean the hypoglycemic attack, which is basically when your sugar levels fall very low and you can feel very shaky. So I wanted to point out some of the things, I'm sure the other physicians will go through this as well with you, but I wanted to act, to tell you what to do when you um, feel those types of things, when you feel you test your sugars and they are very low. And when I say low, I mean below 70. If that happens, I would like you to then obviously break your fast because we are running into issues with they can release uh, it can run into very serious medical conditions. So first, I would like you to test your sugar if it was less than 50, 70, sorry, then take one of these options that I've listed. My arrows have gone a little bit of out of sync, but it's one of these options. So either you have a small piece of fruit, um, such as half a banana or you have a half a cup of juice or soda, or you have one tablespoon of sugar, honey, or syrup, or you get the, if you've been if you've been given by your physician, the instant glucose gel is to take one of those, or if you have the glucose tablets to take those. Once you've taken that, wait for about 15 minutes and then recheck your sugar levels again. Um, and if they are still below 70, repeat this process again of one of these items on these lists. Um, and then if they've gone up, you're more, that's good, great. Wait a little bit and then maybe have a small snack later on. Um, we want to make sure that your hyper is not severe enough because it can cause unconsciousness. And if that does happen, if some one of your family members has diabetes and they become unconscious, please do not give anything by mouth and call and you know call the emergency services immediately. Um, I went ahead and put this together, which is a, just a brief description of foods to avoid and what to kind of have instead. So if we you know we all love our and samosa and fried dumplings and things like that. 
And an alternative of those would be is to have, um, you know, have chola chaat, have a baked samosa instead, don't fry it. Um, boil your dumplings instead rather than, you know, frying them again. So it's thinking about the cooking process of how we're preparing these as well. But also, um, again, portion control is another thing that I'm going to say again. But it's just focusing on the alternatives, looking for general healthy options. We all love our mutai and things like that as well. If you do, you if you have it, that's fine. I'm not going to tell you to deprive yourself, but have a small amount. Um, but there are different equivalent ones like burfi and rasmalai. They're a little bit more, you know, less in sugar and they, you're going to get some dairy from it too. But, you know, have a little bit, not overdoing it again. Um, and then if you're making them at home, if you're making rasmalai, if you're making burfi, just add less sugar to it um, and, you know, kind of make it a healthier version. Um Try not to add too much oil to the um, to our silence when you're cooking and things like that. Um, and try not to you know, grill, bake, do things like that instead, um, because obviously you're taking away some of the oil content that we're going to be eating. Um, cooking methods to avoid, alternative cooking methods. So that one doesn't make sense, <laughs> I just realized. So um, cooking methods generally like the frying, like I've already mentioned, and looking at air frying techniques or looking at oven grilled things like that. Um, deep frying, shallow fry instead, baking, or like they said, they're using your air fryer if you have one. Um, again, using less oil into the foods. Um, it just It doesn't need a lot. I know we want to always add in more oil, but if you see the oil you know, floating at the top of the surface of a salad, you know, you've done it too much, <laughs> you've put too much in it. So maybe start off with less at the cooking time so that we don't, we can avoid those situations like that. Um, and I believe that was my last slide. I thank you so much for everybody. I apologize, but I will have to step away from the presentation because I am at work. Um, and I'm going to leave all the question and answers to my trusted other um, co-hosts with me at the moment. Thank and you so thank much, Vishra. Thank you. You, you had a wonderful uh, presentation and uh, this last slide, I'm leaving it on for all of uh, the the participants. If you want to take a picture of this, this is the cheat sheet for this Ramadan. And of course, get your low glycemic index uh, list ready. Um, awesome. I think Bushra is gone. Okay, so moving on with our, let me see. So moving on with our last but not least, our expert uh, from New York. So uh, I want to introduce Dr. Shahid Kayumi. He is with the Staten Island University Hospital in New York. And he is going to speak about how we can manage our diabetes uh, medications and what effects they have and how we can avoid um, having the side effects if we are over taking the medications more or less. And he has 30 years of experience under his belt. So uh, welcome, Dr. Shahid. I think you'll have to unmute yourself. Dr. Shahid, we can't hear you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa uh, my name is Shahid Kayumi. And um, I'm an endocrinologist, and we're going to discuss uh, medications mainly in type 2 diabetes. So first of all, uh, who should not be fasting? So um, if your diabetes is very brittle, you're having a lot of low and high sugars, uh, you've been admitted with diabetic ketoacidosis if you're acutely ill, if you're pregnant. And you generally speaking, if you are uh, a sick individual getting chemotherapy, have kidney failure, et cetera, et cetera, you shouldn't be fasting. And um, also, if your sugars are running high, very high, you shouldn't be fasting. Say the fasting sugar is greater than 300. Next slide. So when your <clears throat> sugars are moderately well controlled, you may choose to fast. Again, it's uh, not recommended if your fasting sugars out of control, your A1C is greater than eight. Um, you have a lot of diabetic complications. 
The other people who do need to be careful, people taking insulin and also the sulfonylurea medications, all of which usually begin with the G, glipizide, glimepiride, glyburide. Also, very elderly people um, should most likely not fast. Uh, next slide. So if your diabetes is fairly well controlled, your hemoglobin A1C is less than eight, um, and you're taking medications which are non-insulin and non-sulfonylurea medications that do not cause low blood sugar, then um, you may choose to fast. And um, most likely it's going to be successful, but as the previous speakers have told you, it's good to check your sugars at least once or twice a day. Next slide. Um, so there are other options in Islam. Um, if you cannot fast, then we can offer charity, provide food to the poor, or um, fast at a late date to make up. So first we're going to discuss um, the non-insulin medications that are commonly prescribed uh, in type two diabetes. So metformin, which is the commonest drug in diabetes, it's a good medication, does not cause low blood sugar. Um, there should be no change in the daily dose. Um, if you're taking it once a day, best to take most of your diabetes medications with the iftar meal as a general rule. Um, and if you're on twice a day, you can take it with suhoor and iftar. If you're taking it three times a day, then combine the two doses um, in the evening, take it with iftar. Um, slow release metformin, again, best to take it with iftar. Um, the SGLT2 inhibitors are medications such as Jardians, Parsiga, Invokana, et cetera. They do not cause low blood sugar, but a disadvantage is that you could get dehydrated as a result of taking them, especially if your blood sugar is running high. So you need to be well hydrated and your blood sugar levels cannot be running very high. Um, so probably again, best to take it with, with iftar, unless you're taking a combination pill but the dose doesn't necessarily need to change. So drink plenty of water. The non-insulin injections, which are mainly weekly, such as Bidurion, Ozempic, Munjaro, et cetera, Trulicity, um, they don't, do not cause low blood sugar. So there's no need to change dosage. Uh, they're not insulin, so if, however, they can cause nausea and vomiting, if that's an issue, then obviously the medication needs to stop. Next slide. So the DPP-4 inhibitors, again, do not cause low blood sugar, medications such as Genuvia, Trigenta, and so forth, and no dose change. Um, Pioglitazone or Actos is the only TZD available in this country, does not cause low blood sugar, can be taken any time. Um, so the drugs that we need to be careful about are two. Firstly, the sulfonylureas. Um, so if you're taking it twice a day, so maybe take half your usual dose in the morning, if you're taking it at once a day, again, best to take it with iftar. Um, be careful about low blood sugar. So if you're uh, physically very active, you may get low blood sugar. So the medication may need to be stopped if you are having a lot of low blood sugar reactions. One thing we don't have a slide on is insulin. So basically I can just talk about it. So 
if you're taking ba basal insulin, such as Lantus, Levimir, Traceba, um, Tujeo, and so forth, there may be a slight dose reduction on a 24-hour basis. So again, you need to check your sugar and discuss that with your practitioner. If you're taking insulin mixtures, which are like 70-30 and 50-50 um, insulin mixtures, then the morning dose may need to be reduced. The one that you take with Suhoor, maybe just take half your usual dose. If you're taking, again, the basal insulin, such as Lantus and Levimir, um, maybe take half your usual dosage if you're taking it twice a day. So if you're taking twice a day basal insulin, then take half your usual dose in the morning. Um, again, you need to check your sugars and decide. Um, next slide, I think. Thank you for listening. So um, with this, like uh, the portion where we wanted to share um, the guidelines and what the experts say uh, about how to uh, manage diabetes in Ramzan, how to balance it, we have finished with the presentation. And now is the time that uh, you can actually open uh, your mics uh, and if you want to ask a question to our experts, Dr. Shahid Kayumi and uh, Dr. Nasir Asghar are over here. So, and you can also leave your questions in the chat option if you don't feel like saying it out loud in front of everyone. So I have a few questions uh, from the audience and I'll start with the first and um, Dr. Uh, Nasser and Dr. Shahid, you can uh, uh, present your thoughts uh, on this. So the question is that I'm a newly diagnosed diabetic. What are the signs that I should watch out for when I'm fasting so my blood sugar stays well? So um, if you're newly diagnosed, um, like Dr. Kayumi was saying, if it's in the last three months, I wouldn't recommend fasting because you're newly diagnosed. We don't really understand how your sugar they're going to react um, to not eating, what medication you're on. Especially if you're newly diagnosed and you're on metformin, that's okay. But if you're on insulin or your sugars are high, uh, like Dr. Kayumi was saying, above 300, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but if your sugars are very well controlled, then you can definitely do that. What was, what was the second part of the question? So, so what what signs are the what are the signs that I should watch out for when I am fasting? So basically, oh, what so checking your sugars. If you check your sugar, then you are getting low sugars. Then we need to back off a little bit. And it depends on the medication. You know, if you're on metformin or um, Ozempic, you probably will not get low sugars. But if you're on the sulfonylureas like glipizide, glabiride insulin, then you really have to be very careful. I wouldn't recommend it. If you're a new diabetic and you're on insulin or glyburide, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're on metformin, I think it's okay, actually. Um, if you're on Ozempic, it should be okay also. Um, but checking your sugar is going to be the most important thing. You know, physical signs are, you know, shakiness, um, sweating, feeling lightheaded if your sugar is getting low. High sugar, sometimes people don't feel. It's a little bit harder to know high sugars. Um, and then if Dr. Kayumi has any uh, additional question. No, I was going to ask, can we ask what medications you take? Yeah, it's a good, that's a good question, actually. Um, I, I think uh, in front of everyone, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. You have to on the medication you're taking, that's true. But yeah. uh, Dr. Nasir has like shared his thoughts about exactly, uh, you know, uh, what level of uh, care they're having. And they can speak with you if it's okay, I'll connect you with the uh, person who's asked this uh, separate. Yeah. Sure. Just for confidentiality reasons for everyone. Um, okay. Any other questions from the audience? Okay. I see another one. Um, Hello. So let me read that. Somebody's asking something. 
Yeah, I wanted to ask what are the potential benefits of fasting for a diabetic patient, if there are any at all? Yeah, um, I think there are benefits, actually. If you are, you know, if you're overweight um, and your A1C is 6.5, 6.6, and you're on no medications, really for diabetics, then, you know, it sort of gives your body a break. It sort of kind of resets your sugars. Um, so, you know, you've heard of intermittent fasting. It's very popular. Um, so this is a, a form of intermittent fasting. So if you are on really no medications and you're just overweight and you're borderline diabetic, 6.5, 6.6, I think there'd be huge benefits uh, to fasting. I think the only problem is all the celebrations and uh, iftari parties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, blood sugars tend to be quite high in patients, uh -huh. diabetics who fast. Um, yeah. You would think the opposite. You would think they'd be getting a lot of low blood sugars, but it's quite the opposite. It's just because people do celebrate a lot. Yeah, and, you know, we tend to overeat at Iftari, basically, and maybe even overeat at Suhoor. Uh, so high blood sugars are a big problem. Yeah, I mean, if, I think if you're doing it right, it could help. But if you're eating, you know, how we normally eat in Iftar, it can become a problem for sure. Yeah. I have one question here. Yes. Are there any lifestyle recommendations you have based on uh, medication adjustments or that can help a diabetic patient maintain a stable sugar level during fasting? Uh, yes. Um, so, again, depending on the medication, but, you know, avoiding any soda, juice, sweet tea, Gatorade, I think we tend to drink a lot of those things in um, Star or Sahur. So avoid those things. Avoid um, avoid having large amounts of carbohydrates. I think when we open, we get very hungry. We eat large amounts of carbohydrates and it can spike your sugar. So keep your plate balanced. You know, half your plate should be greens, vegetables, a quarter should be rice, potatoes, bread, and another quarter should be protein. And that's a good way to, if you look at your plate and you... Think of it as half vegetables, quarter protein, quarter carbs. That's probably the best way to manage your uh, diet. Um, and then exercise. You know, if you can walk half an hour after after iftar, that would help your sugars a lot because your muscles' only source of sugar, energy is sugar. So your sugar will go down if you walk. So light exercise is recommended then? After, yeah, after um, iftar. iftar. Even in the daytime... In the daytime, if it's light exercise and you feel okay, I think it's fine. I think we should keep on moving. We should not move. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent question. So, and we have uh, Zareen would like to ask a question. Zareen, can you please unmute yourself, please? As Assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you for being here. Um, so my question is probably a little bit more generic. If we have a family history of diabetes, um, but with Ramzan around the corner, would you suggest other than our annual checkup where we have our blood glucose level checked with fasting, would you suggest we do that as a precaution? Yeah, and I think you can get your A1C checked too, actually. Um, you know, I think getting your A1C checked if you have a family history and you're overweight, if your BMI is above 30 or 27, um, would give you, because sometimes, you know, we have patients who come in they're overweight, their BMI over 30. If you look at their fasting sugar, it's normal. But if you do their A1C, it could be 6.0, 5.9. So they're pre-diabetic, meaning they're spiking sugars when they're eating, but they're okay when they're fasting. And I think Dr. Kayumi could give you more information on that. Sure. I mean, all I would say is that everyone needs to eat healthy. <laughs> uh, so... Um, you have a strong family history. You have to check what your BMI is, see whether you have excess body fat. So for Asians, BMI above 23 is high. So, um, so there are a lot of benefits in what Ms. Bushra talked about, you know, eating more vegetables, eating more nuts, because... Um, more important than diabetes is, of course, cancer. So many of the 
common cancers that occur in the West, colon cancer, prostate, breast, are all related to our lifestyle and they cannot be cured by having a colonoscopy. We have to try and do our best to prevent. Um, so I would say coming back to you is to try and achieve your ideal body weight. You know, you can look that up. It isn't always that accurate, but um, so that will ensure that you don't get diabetes. So being checked is one thing, but to prevent it, with diet and exercise is obviously. Right. And then if I can just follow up. So let's say during the day, but uh, we're not overweight, um, sort of average in, mm -hmm. in our physicality, but we do have hypos. Is that, is that a little alarming or is that quite casual for most of us, depending on whether we haven't had breakfast, our diet for the day, that could be a cause. So the question is, um, if you're average weight, but you're having low sugars, is that the right. question? Right, exactly. So we're having hypos. Is that a, an element of, again, I think I'm leading more to, we should be fasting in Ramzan, but then we're also having hypos. Throughout. Yeah, if you're having hypoglycemia, then fasting may not be a great idea. Sometimes we have hypoglycemia if we eat a large carbohydrate meal, we'll have a spike in sugar and then we'll drop fast. So sometimes the hypoglycemic is react, reactive to a high sugar. Um, so sometimes in fasting, that may not be the case if you're not eating large meals, but, you know, in iftar you are going to. Um, but if you have a history of hypoglycemia, you got to be a little bit more careful in doing fasting because your risk is obviously higger. Um, and, you know, there are new sensors, the freestyle Libra sensors. I think they're very good. You can put one on even during Ramadan and check your sugars. And they check your sugar every minute. Um, and they work pretty good. So I would recommend doing that, getting a sensor. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think if you're uh, getting hypoglycemia without having diabetes, maybe eating more protein, eating more nuts, and less carbohydrate may help prevent it. But again, if you're getting it, then maybe you shouldn't fast. Okay, so uh, our next uh, question is from Dr. Shahid Bakar. Uh, he's, uh, thank you so much. The comment is, thanks for very useful information. One question, my HbA1c is 6.5 without medicine. Can I eat dates in Ramadan and how many? Um, so I think Dr. Kareem had a slide saying that two dates is 30 grams of sugar which is a lot, or 30 grams of carbohydrates, or either that was sister, Yeah, this, this, that was Sister Bushra, and I'll Sorry. Take, yeah. yeah. So, you know, dates are pretty this high. I think, I think if you ate one, I don't think, you know, when you open your iftar, I don't think it would be a big deal at all, especially if you haven't eaten anything all day long. Um, but I think I would stick with one. That's what I would recommend. If you ate 6.5. Um, but I wouldn't go beyond one, because that's all you need, I think. Um, Dr. Shahid, your views? Oh, I think, um, yeah, I mean, you could take med uh, metformin to help prevent the diabetes from getting worse. There's one option. Um, and the other, the other thing is after Ramzan to go for another blood test or check your blood sugar at home. That would be the best thing is to just not too often, but once or twice a week to see if your blood sugar is rising, then you do need to start medication. Not to wait till, you know, the blood sugar is very high and then, then you start medication. But, so we have a lot of medications that do not cause low blood sugar for diabetes. So you can take it, just bring your blood sugar down to normal without suffering any other consequences. Excellent. Um, so we have uh, Sister Shaila Arastu. She has a question. Uh, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, Kiran. Assalamu alaikum. And first of all, uh, thank you to all the speakers and the organizers uh, for taking time out to share this valuable information. Uh, Jazakallah for all your efforts. Uh, my question is, um, 
Uh, I one of the speakers just mentioned that um, it's recommended to take uh, diabetic medications during iftar uh, versus sahir. Uh, so I was wondering, uh, is this true for all the medicines, and um, you know, uh, and what would be the reason for that? So I think Dr. Kayumi will be better at answering this question. Um, um... I think it depends what you're taking. Um, but a lot of diabetes medicines can be taken um, um, with suhoor as well. So I don't think it really matters. A lot of them are long acting with a very long half-life. So it doesn't really matter when you take them so much. Um, so you're talking about like blood pressure, cholesterol medicines. Again, it's cholesterol medicine, there's nothing magic about taking it at bedtime, but you can. <laughs> uh, they, they, they'll still work, you know, assuming they're once a day, uh, anytime. Blood pressure medicines can also be taken in the evening. Um, you know, assuming you're taking a long-acting medication. So I'm not sure we can generalize about everything because there's so many medicines, but um, with many medicines, it doesn't matter when you take them, in fact, so long as you take it. Thank you. That, that's good to know. Thank you. That is great. That's great. Uh, so we have another question uh, from the audience. Um, so, okay, so I take care of my mother who is diabetic and what should I do if her sugar levels are low and she's fasting? So if she's, her sugar levels are low and she's fasting, she shouldn't fast, I think. Um, she's a I believe, I believe she wants to ask that, uh, like, you know, uh, she, uh, even if she was uh, fasting and she now knows that the levels are low, how to manage that uh, at home urgently? Uh, oh, urgently. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think Bushra had a slide on that where you can do the sugar gels. They're very good, actually. The gels are good. Sugar tablets are good. A glass of orange juice, a glass of juice, half a banana. Um, these are all good ways to get your sugar up very fast. So I think I would take a picture of this slide. It's an excellent slide. Um, the gels are really nice because you can get quick sugar and you don't have to try to swallow too much. Um, you know, if you're unconscious, of course, you cannot take anything. Um, but if it's, you know, if you're having repetitive sh low sugars, I wouldn't recommend um, fasting. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um... She should not fast. I mean, unless the medicines can be adjusted. Again, we don't know what medicines she takes. Um, so. Perfect. Um, so, and I have a comment now because mm -hmm. uh, people want to uh, see that second slide that Bush, uh, Bushra had, this one. Mm -hmm. They want to have it up for pic yeah. taking pictures. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I think there's another question from the audience. Go ahead, please. Uh, I have a question. Can you please describe the symptoms of high, a very high blood sugar? Um, usually feel very thirsty, might get a headache, um, urinating frequently. Um, a lot of the time there are no symptoms, you know, that's why it's... Uh, asymptomatic disease, you know, it just gets discovered when people come in for angina or a heart attack or something like that. So um, you may have no symptoms. Hello. Uh, I think uh, all participants had given us a very good information. It's very valuable. I need little clarification from Dr. Nasir. Mm -hmm. As he started his presentation, he said that diabetic people are exempted from fast. Mm -hmm. Are the pre-diabetic people are half exempted? That means half day fast? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yeah, the pre -diabetic. <laughs> I don't think they are. Um, I don't believe so. Uh, unless you're getting low sugars. If you I think that, that's, isn't yeah. that a Maulana Saab question? 
That might be. But I, I think I think No, I think yeah. it's more important you do fast. Because <laughs> you might become from pre-diabetes, you might go to normal. Yeah, you know, assuming true. you don't overeat uh yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So thank you so much. Um, is there any other question um, from the audience? We have a little bit of time. Um, or any other comments, Dr. Shahid and Dr. Nasir, that you would like to add? I think um, you know, the most important thing is a little bit of exercise, proper diet. I think these slides from Bush are very good. And then um, checking your sugars. I think if you don't check your sugars, you're just kind of navigating without knowing where you're going. So those are very important things in Ramadan. You check your sugars, eat right, exercise. Yeah, I think the other thing is not to be... Um, some people are just sick from many multiple medical conditions, having cancer chemotherapy or dialysis mm -hmm. or something, and they cannot fast. I think um, one should not feel guilty. I mean, obviously, I'm not... Um, I'm a Muslim, but not an authority on Islam. Um, but um, it, I don't. I think there might be too much compulsion on people who are not well to fast. So I think we should avoid putting excessive pressure on people. Uh, who are sick. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Basali. I just want to make a comment. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, you know, there is uh, an entity called uh, Ram Ramadan Syndrome. It's an article, a case report published in BMJ years ago that people who uh, eat very fast, uh, break the fast in Aftar, uh, and there's acute distension of the stomach, that leads to asymptomatic pancreatitis. And uh, there was a case report uh, uh, of, about uh, eating uh, too much and acute distension of the stomach. So... I think I, one thing I would I always recommend people uh, in my practice, uh, I'm a, uh, not an uh, internal medicine doctor, but I'm a special pulmono pulmonologist. But, so I always recommend people to eat uh, in uh, pieces. You know, I mean, uh, they should divide the aftar into two or three uh, sessions uh, rather than eating at one time. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because large meals are going to sp spike your sugar. So... I think breaking it up, which is hard to do, we're all hungry, yeah. but I think it's ideal to do that. Eat a small yeah. stall and then eat a, maybe a little smaller meal a little bit later on. I think that would be ideal. Yeah. The, other, the other comment I'd like to make is that uh, some people are very enthusiastic in uh, Ramadan to lose weight. And there have been some case reports about uh, uh, superior mesentic artery syndrome causing acute abdomen uh, from sudden weight loss uh, because the fat supports this artery, which is uh, originates very perpendicular to from the aorta. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another thing, you know, uh, I recommend people that, you know, they should not be aggressive about uh, weight loss strategies during Ramadan. I mean, some people really don't eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, those are the things, you know, we have to do things in moderation. Uh, this is, uh, so I just want to, uh, you know, mention here. Yeah, I think I agree. I mean, Ramadan not for weight loss, regardless. So. Yeah, you're you're right. But a lot of people gain weight during during Ramadan as well. Yeah. Um. So, I guess we have to be careful both ways. I agree. Everything in moderation. Chew your food slowly. And don't overeat. The, uh... You know, the, uh, uh, multiple other things, you know, I think diabetes is one uh, aspect, but uh, if you look at the Ramadan, you know, there are many other diseases. For example, there have been literature about uh, uh, exacerbation of, uh, you know, uh, of uh, bipolar disorder. You know, the bipolar disorder, you know, they get, uh, uh, becomes uncontrolled because of change in circadian rhythm. So there are other biological uh, factors, you know, we have to take into account, uh, not just uh, one glucose level. Uh, I think there has to be a, a, a global approach when it comes to uh, treatment of uh, uh, of uh, diabetes uh, in, in Ramadan, controlling sugar. Uh, so, 
you know other the other biological uh, uh, processes in the body should also be considered in every patient yeah absolutely i mean there's so many you got cardiovascular you got pulmonary there's so many different things that affects so uh, absolutely okay so that is very really nice thank you for sharing uh, these thoughts um true we have many uh, other diseases that we need to uh, be careful of in uh, ramadan um we could only speak about diabetes today but with that i think i'm going to uh, thank our expert uh, panelist over here dr shahid kayumi and dr nasir azgar i'll uh, give my regards to uh, bushra uh, jafri um, she ha she had to go back uh, to the floor so um, if you have any other question, you can contact us on our email. And um, if uh, you do fall in this category where you cannot uh, fast, you can always donate. And IMI, uh, the Imamia Medics International, they have different levels of charities that they can um, always, uh, they need help with. So the information is on your uh, screen. And uh, please feel free uh, to approach their donation uh, uh, website. Um, and with that, thank you so much. I appreciate your help uh, with all the questions and uh, the presentation. Thank you. Have a thank great you. weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.